Hello and welcome to Cell Reviews. I'm your host DJ T Cell, and I'm back for another review. And today we're looking at Fonte's latest work. And uh, no news is good news. Now, for those that may not know who Fonte is, I'm gonna give a little bit of overview before we dive in to the review. Fonte, he is one of those people that I, I, I consider as the brightest spark in hip hop. Came up in the notice era. Probably been a bit unlucky that he didn't receive the same mainstream notice or recognition that Lupe Fiasco received. Um, con- con- considering both of them came up in the same eras. Fonte used to be part of Lil Brother with Big Poo and Ninth Wonder. He is one of those rappers that is literally very gifted. I would like to see him a lot more in the mainstream I like a lot of people know about him because his content is really good. From what I heard from the Minstrel Show which was Lil Brother's studio album back in 2006. That's just a little overview of him. The story in this album is regarding a man that was really moved by what he's seen. It seems like this man has seen a lot and he's sick of what he's seen but he's not sick in the term of like he's looking for aggressive change he's more sick and he's aware of the fact that it's going to require a gradual change from everybody so he has taken on the stance of becoming more of a teacher more of a guiding counselor rather than someone who is going at it to try and really educate that's the first thing that i grabbed from this album it covers a lot of layers talks about relationships broken homes the ever so revolving door of the prison cells it also talks about health and this was really demonstrated in expensive jeans the track such as life really brought the album full circle in terms of the story especially when you do consider the, the sample where it says you are not what you do but how you do it this created such an open interpretation this didn't just transcend to what he was talking about in terms of drugs in this case um he was really hitting home on, on that which was what song was about you're not a drug addict is how you relieve your stress is what defines who you are so if you're doing drugs he's actually offering you the other option of okay you don't have to use drugs to escape whatever trouble you're going through you can use other outlets that's what's going to define who you are those choices that you make Moving on from that the way he delivered his message was exquisite i actually and like the local content is in this album was actually very rich the skill of rap the uh the way the way he used uh, it was very creative i have never it, it, it was probably the most creative piece i've heard this year and I still have a lot of albums to listen to. So the jury's, I don't think the jury's out. I really think that this is the most creative piece I've heard this year. The reason, the reason why I say that is because it, I'm not sure how many people pick this up. When you listen to Pastor Tigalo, he actually created this character and the way he used, he used them um, to convey a greater message was ingenious. The reason why I say this is because from the tracks from Tig- from Tigalo to Until I Believe It Was Find Your Love Again, he was actually very preachy. He, it, he addressed his topics like this. Not to come across as condescending or anything like or anything like that, but just to come across as a guidance or uh, it, it gives you the comfort that you're being you you're, you're not being talked at but you're being guided i think he created that character and the reason why i believe he created that character was the pure fact of every time you would uh, every time you hear the sample going tigolo 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 and you know that this character is present and this character is about to say something so every time this character com- comes he's actually offering good news which uh which again is making you think okay no news is good news but this album is good news for you it's kind of saying that pastor tigolo he is actually bringing you the good news you know that he is actually bringing you what you should hear and what you and giving you that little bit of hope you know i love i love the creativity there because he really made the album an easy if of listening and i was really impressed on how he delivered and how much he was able to create such harmony with it, with his stories and fit so much into just 10 tracks i just tell uh young artists all the time use every tool in your toolbox because you never know which one is gonna knock down the wall you never know what your thing may be style i felt it was a bit one-dimensional i was let down because i i, I was expecting some sort of energy change it's each to their own in terms of 
what you are list- listening for. I know what Conte can do. I just would like a bit more three-dimensional than two, simply because of the fact that when I look at people that are very similar to him, uh, Mufei Fiasco, for example, or even Royce of Five Nine, when I listen to his album, I actually come that that album comes straight to my head because of the relatable messages between the two albums. Uh, one, The Book of Ryan by Royce of Five Nine, which I also review on this channel talked about alcoholism and how that can ruin life and this is kind of parallel obviously of course this of course this one hits a lot more topics but um it's very comparable and with this album what royce had in terms of caterpillar summer unlock and um legendary he, was, he switched up the energy a little bit he would make you it will keep you interested you like he anticipated that however this album doesn't really have that because I listen to these songs again and again. I enjoy the content because I actually do enjoy to be guided and you know counsel a little bit. Like I feel like I need to get take something away from it. Some artists, if you're blessed enough to where it's like, listen, your fans, they're right. I don't care if yeah. you got a hit. Yep. I don't care if you, you know, how hot you are, how hot you're not. We ride with you. Overall, the flow and style, the way he he, he uses um, he uses the samples to let you know that he's gonna preach down. That is particular. I mean, this may be subtle, and I may have read too much into it, but I really believe the use of Pasatigolo was deliberate, and I really believe he was trying to uh, become that preacher of right of good or, in this case, righteousness. Instrumentation, I have to give it four out of five. You have Joseph Leinberg on the production. You also have Lebo Springsteen, uh, who also known as Levon Harris who these two are heavyweights because Joseph, Joseph Lineberg known for his work in Kendrick Lamar's um, Pimp of Butterfly album he, he pretty much contributed in six tracks of that one notably These Wolves and as well as uh, as well as Mortal Man with him as well as Devon Harris who has worked with a wealth of artists but the most no- notable work that he's done is Diamonds from Sierra Leone uh, with Kanye West. With this wealth of talent going into the album, as well as upcoming talent, you have a very big idea that this is going to be the best sounding album that you've ever heard. And it's true, it really was. That being said, it's not, it's a great sounding album, don't get me wrong. The point I'm making is, you have this Fronte, I believe he has one, a good hit in it. I believe, but there's, I come to listen to this album and with the wealth of talent, that was with the wealth with, with the wealth of talent that was in this album. I cannot help but feel that he, he, he could have made one hit. I mean, I'm comparing this to the Book of Ryan, but we have those artists who are able, who are able to to create hit songs, but but retain the quality of their message. I mean, even Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly with the song All Right, that was a great conscious song, but at the same time, it was a hit. Like, I I know Fonty has got this in him, but I gave it an overall 22.5 overall. It, it, it is a great album. Go listen to it. You you can pick up a lot on it. I just have the one criticism that he does have a wealth of talent to go by and a wealth of talent in his arsenal, and he didn't really use them to the, to the, to, to, to the full potential. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Like, really and truly, like, I really, I highly recommend that, that you go listen to this album. I learned so much from it myself, and I really think that you're gonna learn from it as well. I'm really interested to know what your thoughts, um, what your thoughts are on this album. Did you, did you really like it? Uh, what do you think was missing? Do you agree with this? Um, with it, with it, with the points I've raised in this album, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe as well. Yes, I love the fact that you have to sign it like an ideal album rather than extensive, rather than an extensive EP. And what I mean by that is, it, it wasn't just a collection of of hit singles or tracks. It was, it was one big song. It was like, it was there was so many things going on in this one big song that he was trying to say. And this is what I love about this. And the way that he dropped it after Trump won and what Trump is doing is actually also quite ingenious because I believe if he dropped this back in 2016, like he planned, I, I don't think it would have got that much attention. Now that he dropped it, it, it makes sense. It really does make sense. Maybe that's why he held it, he held it off for so long. And um, maybe wanting to see Trump, um, what Trump would would would, would do while it, while it, it got into office. After now seeing it, he drops it now.